welcome back. You're watching the News Hour live from London. Our main story. In a move that could dramatically inflame an already tense situation in Eastern Europe, Russian President Vladimir Putin has signed a decree to recognize the independence of two breakaway regions of Ukraine. Putin made the announcement in a publicly televised address following a meeting with his Security Council. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden is going to issue an executive order soon that will ban trade with Donetsk and Luhansk. The White House says more measures are forthcoming and separate from sanctions that have been prepared if there is an invasion of Ukraine. The EU has announced it will sanction those involved in the recognition of the breakaway regions of Donetsk and Luhansk. And then earlier on, Russia said it had killed five people from Ukraine who it claims were breaching its border in the Rostov region and captured a soldier alive. Ukraine has branded this fake news. Michael Borsicu is a global affairs analyst and a former spokesperson for the OSCE special monitoring mission to Ukraine. He joins us live now from the Ukrainian city of Lviv. I'm not sure if you've heard anything about these reports, but there is this line coming in from the Reuters news agency saying that Russian President Vladimir Putin has ordered peacekeeping missions to be a peacekeeping operation to be deployed in uh, east, in eastern Ukraine's two breakaway regions. Now, I mean. Do, do you have any confirmation of that? Do you have any information about what might be happening there? I don't, Miriam. Uh, good to be with you, by the way. But uh, that is a scary proposition because this is a scenario that has been talked about for quite some time, actually, by Russia. Look, today what was not surprising is actually what Mr. Putin did. I've been predicting that for weeks, that he would formally recognize the independence, so-called independence, of these two occupied areas. Uh, what remains to be seen now is whether... Uh, Russian troops will come in. And I think this is what this report alludes to, is that Russian troops under the guise of peacekeepers will come in and formally seize control of that area. Uh, the other thing, quickly, I mean, uh, as of today or yesterday, there were still a sizable contingent of my former colleagues from the OSCE monitoring the situation on the ground. Now, now that these areas are, in a sense, independent, not part of the OSCE territory, what's going to happen to them. So a lot of uh, parts in play here that uh, remains to be seen what the impact will be. And could that be about a consolidation of control of that territory or what are the possibilities of Russian troops exceeding that line and, and going further? Well, I'll tell you one thing. If uh, Mr. Biden's so-called sanctions that were just announced of trade and financing restrictions on people doing business in those areas that anything to go by, that's no deterrent whatsoever to Russia. They will continue to expand. Um, the, you know, uh, the thing with Mr. Putin is when he smells weakness, which is what these sanctions are, he will prod further for, for soft tissue. So um, the Western response needs to be far, far more robust than what we've just seen out of Washington this evening. In terms of the European response to this, we've—I mean, I suppose—we've certainly seen uh, more unity uh, amongst NATO and Europe as the mm -hmm. crisis has continued to escalate. But is there still some difference of opinion among the 27 member states on how broad sanctions should be? It would certainly appear that way. And of course, Miriam, the nuclear option is that Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which Russia has spent billions of dollars on and to weaponize energy in Eastern story in Europe. And, uh, you know, the European continent, as we all know, is in an energy crisis right now. They need that Russian gas. So um, I think the brave thing to do if we have bravery in any of the Eastern European capitals is to stop it, not let it function tell Russia that we will find our gas from elsewhere. There will be short-term pain, of course, for European residents and consumers. But uh, what, what's better, that or further Russian aggression? Because I think, quickly, on, on hearing Vladimir Putin's speech tonight, it doesn't sound to me like a man who is prepared to stop just at the borders of the Ukraine. That was the chilling thing about that speech, is he would go much further, perhaps into the Baltic states or into Poland. It's uh, an extraordinary moment, an extraordinary moment right now. Michael Borsicu, thank you very much for joining us there from the city of Lviv in Ukraine. My pleasure.